Hello there, I'm Jo Parfit and I'm here today to interview Mike Harling. Now Mike is one of many people who these days has aspired to turn a blog into a book or what's maybe today known as a blook. Mike's book is called Postcards from Across the Pond and it tells the stories, the funny stories, that are th of things that have happened to him as an American living in Britain. I'm asking Mike here several questions about the process of writing his book, publishing his book, and promoting it. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. My story is simply a series of humorous vignettes from my life, which took an unexpected turn some years back after I met and married an English woman and suddenly found myself living in a foreign country. I never felt the world would be worse off without my story. It was more a case of me not being able to not write. So I figured if I was writing anyway, I may as well use my own life as fodder. I think if my story does add anything to the world, it's primarily a good laugh, and frankly, the world could use more of that. My feeling was that as a humor book, it would have a universal appeal, and as a book about an American living in Britain, it would have a market among expats. The reviews, both public and private, tend to validate these assumptions. Expats say they can identify with the episodes in the book, but some of my most vocal fans are non-expats who simply find it funny. I had a built-in audience for my book because it grew out of a long-standing website with a dedicated following. I've since started a blog or two and make the usual rounds of Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. I also write articles for expat sites and my blog is linked to a number of additional sites including my local newspaper. Currently I'm undertaking a virtual tour in an attempt to expose myself to a new and wider audience. Uh, I can't say any method works better than another, you just have to be in as many places as you can and trust in the cumulative effects. To say chosen route to publication implies the author has ultimate control over the process. Mostly, as in my case, the route chooses you. When I finally decided to do the book and compile the original manuscript, I began querying agents and publishers. The initial response was good, but it generally came down to a case of, this is really funny, but who the hell are you? Belief was, if I was not already famous, no one was going to buy the book. After about a year, I published it myself, sold a few copies, and went on to do something else. Enter Tony Summers Hargis, author of Rules Britannia. I bought her book, and I liked it so much I wrote to her. She answered, and we began a correspondence. Eventually, I sent her my book, and she loved it so much she said, I must find a publisher for it. She put me in touch with Lean Marketing Press, and they enthusiastically took it on. If you're the type of person who believes that the world needs to read what you write, then you already have enough self-belief to go around. It may wane occasionally, but it'll always come back. So the confidence isn't hard. It's the validation of that confidence, i.e. publication. That's the difficult part. In my case, I was writing individual humorous essays for my website. These bite-sized bits of motivation came on a daily basis and were inspired by anything from attempting to mail a letter to encountering a monster spider in the bathroom. Over time, the book simply wrote itself. The biggest challenge in this entire process was finding a publisher. Because of the way the book was written, by the time I even thought about it, the book was already complete. Then it was just a matter of compiling it. So the writing and revising of the book was not as difficult as it would be for any other type of book. The content of my book started out as content on my website, so I received feedback on a regular basis, and this helped me to judge what was working and what wasn't. The basic rule was, if it was funny, it worked. If it wasn't, it didn't. Everyone has a book in them, and in most cases, that is where it ought to remain. Without question, the kindest thing you can do for anyone who comes to you asking for advice on writing is to tell them to quit. If they're not really a writer, you'll help them from wasting their life doing something they were not meant to do. And if they're a real writer, they'll ignore you.